He made the FBI's 10 most wanted list. He was twice convicted and was jailed for cyber crimes. But now he's gone from the dark side to helping companies combat attacks. He's currently the CEO of cybersecurity consulting firm Mitnick Security. Uh, Kevin, welcome back. We are delighted to have you with us. Explain to those who haven't been following this story over the weekend what went on here, why Cassia is at the center, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, uh, why they are at the center of it, and why it has metastasized as broadly as it has. Well, first of all, uh, Revel, it's a ransomware group, and they have affiliates. So this is called ransomware as a service. What that means is they're not actually deploying the malicious code. It's these affiliates, these people that are using this ransom where it's a service platform. And what they did is uh, one of these affiliates found on authentication bypass, what that means is they found a vulnerability in Kaseya's um, platform that allowed them to log in without having any credentials. And then they did a super sophisticated attack where they were able to interfere with the update process. So during the update process, it would actually deploy the malicious code, which turned out to be the ransomware. When I was reading about this earlier today, it was super sophisticated. This isn't the type of stuff that we remember when your computer would be locked and you'd have to pay three to four hundred dollars of Bitcoin to get this back. This is this is a, a sophisticated tradecraft. This is almost to the level of nation state, but it could be these Russian gangs. Don't forget, these gangs are making tens of millions of dollars when they're compromising these victims and they're actually paying out these ransoms so they could hire the best security researchers. Maybe they're doing it as shell companies. So the researchers don't even realize they're working for the bad guys. And when they develop these tools, like what we call zero day exploit, a zero day exploit is a security hole, for example, in a product that the manufacturer doesn't know about so they can't patch it. Well, in mm -hmm. this particular case, the bad actors used a zero day exploit to deploy a fake update, and what this update did is it deployed the ransomware in these uh, Kaseya devices, and this was actually pushed down to the customers, you know, because their customers were MSPs, mm -hmm. and it was actually pushed down to those customers, mm -hmm. and I believe uh, earlier on the show you mentioned about 1,500. That's, that's an amplification attack, because what these bad actors are doing is rather than targeting one company at a time, yes. they're targeting MSPs because now those MSPs have customers, and so it amplifies the attack, and they're able to monetize this malware and, in a more expedient and way. And MSP is what, again? Managed service provider. Managed so, service provider. So, so you say yeah. Revel, I said Revel. I'm not sure which is more more appropriate here. Uh, I'm going to take your word that the, that the proper way to pronounce it is Revel, uh, but it feels pretty Revel to me. Um, you said this is Revel a is super fine. sophisticated attack. That's my question. Uh, what makes it so super sophisticated? And we are calling it the largest such attack of its kind. What makes it the largest? I largest is it that that metastasis out over maybe 1,500 companies? Is it the size of the ransom? What is it? What makes it so big in scale? It was the tradecraft, the tradecraft they used to evade any antivirus tools, the tradecraft that they found a zero-day exploit to actually carry out this attack. It was more of the, mm -hmm. the, the technical under the hood of how it was working was, you know, the super sophisticated part of this. The ransom going up, I think that's pretty much what we're seeing as yep. these ransomware attacks grow. We're seeing the numbers rise. And it's already been common knowledge that these bad actors are going after MSPs. That's nothing new. So the amounts rising is not Quick. really interesting. It's, it's really how they went about deploying the, ma the malware. Are we losing the cyber war? Well, it looks like the bad actors are ahead. I mean, uh, unfortunately, and it's because a lot of companies think, well, if we enable very strong passwords or we you know, add two-factor authentication, that that's really going to stop ransomware attacks. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, that's a good thing to do, but the bad guys aren't going through the front door. They're going through the back door. They're finding vulnerabilities like they did in this uh, Kaseya appliance and getting in mm -hmm. that way to deploy mm -hmm. the malicious code. So companies have to do uh, much better at protecting their organization. Right. And of course, a lot of this stuff is where it's encrypting their files. So what businesses ought to do 
is look for appliances that create like a logical air gap. Because a lot of these backups, you know, in a business environment are done in such a way if a bad actor breaks into your company, mm -hmm. they're able to ma manipulate and damage those backups. 